Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to uh, Mr. Wise and Ms. Murray, thank you very much for your work ethic. Uh, Mr. Wise, we're, I know you <clears throat> started this journey in South Carolina, and uh, are you with us, Mr. Wise? Oh, yeah. yeah. Where are you from in South Carolina? Columbia. Columbia, all right, go Gamecocks. Uh, what did your what did your father did he was he a military person? Yeah, he worked at uh, Fort Jackson. He was a cook in the military. You know, he served abroad in Germany as mm -hmm. a cook in the military. Yeah, and that was his duties. Did did he retire from the military? He did. He actually um, was was he got a little up in age and had to leave but he now he's now a hospital worker he's still in the workforce well the reason i want to say that you have a very hard working family <laughs> and i want to recognize that same to you miss murray you know being 65 and working at walmart is no easy thing to do uh so let's start with that concept uh, we want to reward hard working people uh doug um so this conversation with senator um, whitehouse i think is interesting the minimum wage was put in back in the 30s, why? Um, it was part of the, the Fair Labor Standards Act and it was intended to um, provide a floor for wages and to um, make sure that there was no incentive to hire children as well. Yeah, I think, I think that's why it was put in, exporting underage kids. Yep. And uh, back in those days, it was uh, pretty tough stuff. Uh, the minimum wage is part of American business culture, do you agree with that? The American business community has accepted that the minimum wage is part of their business model? Yes. And do you know of anybody who wants to get rid of it? No. Okay, so what we gotta do is find out how to raise it without losing jobs and trying to create uh, job growth, not depress job growth. Carl, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, well, I'll be home. I'm going to help your restaurant this weekend if I can get home. Uh, so <laughs> you. you, you've had a 25% decrease in revenue due to COVID? 35% year over year, 20 versus 19. Okay, do you see it getting any better right now? Uh, not at the moment. January and February started off uh, on even a worse track, uh, as you know, down here with our nice climate. Well, we're anticipating climbing out of this around April 1st when things warm up. Okay, so <clears throat> you think 2021 is going to be a tough year for you? Absolutely, without a doubt. Okay, let's compare 2019. Was that a good year before COVID? 2019 was our best year uh, in the history of the company. Okay, so the idea of raising the minimum wage if you did it maybe differently than we're proposing, is that acceptable to you? Yes, sir. Tried to make that point earlier that this is not about not raising the minimum wage. This is about that it's not a one size fits all solution. Right. What, and that 107% right. increase is okay. too much. What percentage of your business is college students, of your employees? Uh, I don't have an exact number, but could pretty educatedly say a third of our employee workforce is high school and college students working part time. Okay. And on the top end, you have some, you know, chefs and people who this is their career, right? Yes, sir. If we increase your cost at a time your revenue is down, who suffers the most in your business model? The entry level positions, those high schoolers, those college students, those part time workers. A lot of the college students are trying to pay for college education themselves and working while in college. So those would be the first jobs um, to disappear. Well, let's pray for better days. And uh, Mr. Chairman and my colleagues on the other side, uh, Waffle House gave me a plan to raise the minimum wage. I don't know if it would be appealing to you, but count me in for the idea that we can do this. I just like to get the COVID in a little, little better spot and we'll sit down and talk. Thank you all very much. Been a good hearing.